Today's video is all about the state of flow. I'm going to be sharing what it is. I'm going to be explaining why it's so important for artists and creatives of all kinds to be able to get into a state of flow consistently. And I'll also be providing three practical tips that will help you get into a state of flow on a more consistent basis. There have been so many studies, so many experiments and books done and written on this topic throughout the years that are super interesting. And I'm going to make sure to leave links to a few of the articles that I read in order to research for this video down below in the text section of this post in case you'd like to read them as well. I really wanted to create a video on this topic because today a lot of us might feel that it's difficult to get into a state of flow. And I think that especially as artists and creatives, we need to develop that ability to focus, to immerse ourselves in our subject, to be present in order to create art. And if we're not able to do this, unfortunately, it's likely that we're not going to be able to experience that beautiful state of flow very often. And if we don't experience that state of flow, we run the risk of not being able to progress our skills to a higher level. This ability to be present, to focus for long periods of time is getting harder and harder because of today's fast paced world that is full of distractions where it's the normal thing to do to be multitasking all day, every day. But when it comes to creating art and, you know, writing and creating music and that kind of thing, you can't really be multitasking when you're doing this kind of thing. You need to be able to immerse yourself in what you're doing. You need to develop that ability to focus and to stay present. But rest assured that this is kind of a muscle that you can grow and develop over time. If you're finding it difficult to focus on something for more than three minutes, you can work on that. And the super interesting thing for me has been as well that this ability to focus and be present as I am creating art has positively affected other areas of my life as well, where I can now be truly present with my loved ones and when I am doing other things, even working out. This skill will help you tremendously, not only with your art, but in other areas as well. All right, so with all that said, I'm gonna talk about what state of flow is. So if you've ever been doing any kind of activity from playing sports to working out to something creative like writing or playing music or painting or drawing, where you're completely immersed in what you're doing, you lose track of time, you're enjoying the process fully, and you're kind of on autopilot almost. Your hand, your body seems to be almost moving and flowing on its own without you having to think too much. And you also feel this kind of intrinsic motivation where doing the thing is what brings you joy is the purpose, not really the end result or showing off the end result to people. It's doing the thing. If you've experienced these things, then you've probably experienced being in a state of flow. When you're in this state of flow, there is no ego involved. There is no self-consciousness. There is no negative self-talk. Um, all of these things make you stutter. They make you kind of second guess your actions. Um, these are the kinds of things that make you not enjoy art creation or writing or whatever the case may be. When you're in a state of flow, these things don't happen. They don't arise. So you're better able, of course, to enjoy the process. Because there is no ego involved, no judgment you let yourself go more. You allow yourself to truly immerse yourself and be present and enjoy the process. When you're in a state of flow, there is no perfectionism. There are no limiting beliefs. You're just flowing, you're just doing, you're enjoying. And yes, you're using your skills intentionally, but you're also allowing yourself to let go. There is a higher level of confidence. And when you are drawing, when you're painting, that confidence comes through, it shows in your work. 
Okay, so now that I've explained what flow state is, I'm gonna talk about why it's so important for artists and creatives to experience flow state consistently. So it has been shown in studies that both artists and sports players achieve peak performance when they are in flow state. Not only this, but it is when they are in flow state that they are enjoying themselves much more. And it's kind of a cycle because if you're enjoying what you're doing, you're gonna want to do it more, which will lead to more progress. The more consistently you do the thing, the more you're gonna grow, right? The more you experience flow state, the more you're gonna want to do the thing and the more you're gonna grow. But here's the important thing. Some time ago, I shared this video where I talk about the Goldilocks zone where it's very important that no matter what point it is that you're at in your art journey so far, you acknowledge your current level and where you're at and you pick the projects, the studies, whatever it is that you're gonna be working on based on your current level. The activity, the project that you're going to be tackling, it cannot be too far out of reach beyond and above your skill level to the point that it's just gonna be overwhelming for you and that along the way, you're constantly going to feel frustrated and anxious and stressed and ultimately defeated. And it can't be so easy that it is boring for you and that working on that thing just lacks meaning for you. There is a sweet spot in between the two right? And that's where you want to be in order to arrive at a state of flow. The task on hand has to have a certain level of challenge to it, but you have to know that with your current level, your current skills, you're going to be able to achieve the thing. Maybe not immediately, but with a little bit of work and trying, you're going to be able to do the thing. You have to make sure that you're acknowledging and being honest about where you're at so that you can choose activities and challenges that are appropriate for your level, and that is going to allow you to get into a state of flow. You're not gonna be able to get into a state of flow if the task on hand is way too challenging and you're still lacking too many skills and too much knowledge in order to do the thing. And it can't be so easy that you get bored and you're not able to fully immerse yourself. So jumping right into part three of this video where I want to provide practical tips that will help you get into a state of flow more consistently. So in the beginning of this video, I was mentioning how we currently live in a very fast world that is full of distractions. We are very used to multitasking. And in order to get into a state of flow, these things are just not gonna be helpful. We have to practice focusing on one thing at a time. Distractions are a major issue when it comes to creative work. My first tip for you is to prepare yourself mentally and physically before getting started with your art practice, before sitting down to draw or to paint. Make sure that you are setting the tone, that you are doing what you can to get yourself relaxed. There are so many things that you can explore in order to do this. You can simply sit yourself down before getting started and practice just breathing in and out for a couple of minutes to relax yourself. You can also try meditation. There are so many meditation channels on YouTube. Try a little video, pop in your earbuds and just listen and breathe and relax. You can also stretch, actually move your body and do some stretching. You can listen to music or even dance around a little bit or do some brain dumping in your journal to declutter your mind. I want to encourage you to explore, try different things and see what works for you. But make sure that you feel better, that you feel relaxed and that you're ready to focus before sitting down to work on your art. Tip number two is turn off distractions. Put your phone away, leave it in another room, tell your loved ones, the people that you live with, that you're gonna be working from this hour to this hour and that you're trying to minimize distractions and even close those tabs in your computer or whatever device it is that you're using if you're using one for references and inspiration or research or whatever it is. Close those tabs 
to those different social media sites or you know things that are just distracting you just make sure that you're opening the things that you need moving on to tip number three and this one has to do with the goldilocks zone that i was talking about before watch that video but make sure that you're being very honest with your current skill level and where you're at and pick projects and studies that are meant for your current level. The purpose with this is for you to be able to go in with a certain level of confidence so that you can do some things in autopilot, right? Because you've done it previously, you have some practice and knowledge on this. So there is a certain level of challenge there because you're building on that skill that you've already developed, but you've gone through that process enough that you have that level of confidence to get started and to get to a certain point. This is why I'm always encouraging everyone to take the challenge up incrementally a step at a time and make sure that you're covering the basics. So many people jump over the basics and try to jump straight into very complex subjects and very intricate uh, compositions with multiple techniques and multiple elements involved too soon. And then they just get super frustrated and they think that they don't have it in them to create great art or become great artists when that isn't the case at all. They're just skipping over all of this foundational stuff and they're trying to jump straight into very challenging things way too soon. Take things incrementally a step at a time and make sure that you're covering the basics. And my final tip is, and this is kind of a bonus tip, it's to not overthink it and give yourself permission to create bad art. Not everything that you do has to be a masterpiece. You don't have to be striving for perfection with everything. Perfection does not exist, not even in art. So many of us are masters at overthinking things and just thinking too much when we could be improving our skills so much faster if we just allow ourselves to take imperfect action consistently. Perfection isn't the objective here. Progress is. And it's through putting ourselves through the process over and over that true progress is made. So don't overthink it. Just do the thing and let the chips fall where they may. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful rest of your week and tons of progress and enjoyment moving forward in your art journey. Talk to you soon. Bye.